and 8 o'clock on the dot. This is Coffee Talk. We get together seven days a week in the morning, chat about what's going on in the world of weather, hopefully get your day started off on the right note, and make sure you are informed. It is Friday, after all, so we've got the weekend right around the corner. Lots of question marks, I'm sure, as far as how the weather will play in, so we want to make sure to have you covered there. There's a lot going on in the world of weather. Here's the top two things we are monitoring for you this morning. First off, Showers and thunder showers are returning to our forecast. We're going to be tracking that hour by hour, not just for today, but also looking ahead to the weekend. Plus, yeah, we are tracking the tropics. That's just an image to, that's a placeholder image of sorts. It's not like there's a big hurricane or anything. But models continue to show stuff in the Pacific. And interestingly enough, the Pacific will impact the Atlantic. Hmm, we'll discuss all of that. But before we get too deep into anything, let's just start your day off and see what's doing on our Tower Cam perspective. Here's a look uh, across town. Maybe. I think I hit the space bar one too many times. We'll go back. There you go. There's a look across town from downtown Orlando looking off toward the west. So Windermere, Gotha, a couple of high thin clouds. Not too bad at all. We take a look at temperatures, and it is nice and uh, warm. 76 degrees in Orlando. It's 73 degrees in Palm Coast, 78 outside uh, in Titusville, 76 degrees in Palm Bay. Mid to upper 70s across our entire area. There is no fog to deal with whatsoever. But I do want to point out, our first warning live Doppler radar is showing rains. All off the shoreline for now. You can see out over the Gulf Stream waters, but there are some heavy downpours. There's a lot of moisture in our area, and it is all of that moisture that is going to aid in developing those showers and storms. Why? We've talked about this the last couple of days, my friends. There is a cold front. Yippee. It's not going to do anything to our temperatures. Boo hiss. Yeah, uh, it's kind of helping to pile up that moisture back over us. The last couple of days, it's been the panhandle. Uh, it's been the Gulf of Mexico. All of that is moving our direction again. So I hope you enjoyed the dry air because that's gone. We're back to normal shower and thunderstorm regime over these next couple of days, next couple of weeks, next couple of months, that whole sort of thing. Uh, Connie, good morning to you. Susie, Tina, good morning, good morning. Nancy, how are you? Ryan, Carol, hope y'all are doing well this morning. Mary, Kenneth, good morning, good morning. Ashley, how are you? Hope you're doing well. I see mom's in the room. Good morning to you. Hope you're doing well. Marie, good morning. It's Friday. Uh, at this point, I just call it a frontal boundary. It ain't cold. I know. I mean, technical definition, though. Yeah. I also like to say that it's a cold front and then backpedal and say, but it's not going to do any cold. But I, you're, you're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. John, Dina, good morning. Bye, Miss Kelly. Bye. Bye, Landon. I love you. Debbie, good morning to you. All right, so with that said, yes, it's a cold front, but it's not going to do anything cold, so it's just a frontal boundary. So what about temperatures through the day today? So here's a look, and of course, we're cycling through your city-by-city city temperatures on the bottom of the screen, but in terms of our overall forecast, watch those readings into the mid and upper 80s by lunchtime, lower 90s by 3 o'clock, and then we get into the showers and the thunder showers. Uh, last couple of days, we've had like a 10% coverage of rain. We're going to do much better than that today. We're getting to about a 40-50% coverage of rain. So 50-50 shot, you get rains in your neighborhood. Um, it is the afternoon, so plan that accordingly. Uh, the good news, though, in all of this is that while the rain chances are rising, at least it holds our temperatures at bay a little bit. Average high temperature has now climbed to 90 degrees. We'll be in that vicinity area-wide. The showers and the thunder showers, of course, are going to help with that. Uh, so we'll make it to about 92 in Orlando, 90 degrees Leesburg in the villages, 88 in Palm Coast, 89 degrees uh, back over to New Smyrna Beach. All right? All right. So that's the temperatures, but of course... <sighs> The rains, that's what everybody wants to know. So let's just start future cast off. I'll bring it full. This is 10 o'clock this morning. Rains north and west of town. That's all thanks to that frontal boundary. Uh, it's the spark, if you will, that helps to fire up the rest of the rain. So let's just follow through time. 11, 12 o'clock. You can already start to see some activity moving across Sumter, Marion County, even back over to Volusia, perhaps. That'll be interesting to see if that plays out. After that, let's continue through time. Uh, one, 
2 o'clock. Yeah, we're continuing to see those showers and those thunder showers kind of piling from west to east. And that's the direction I think that we're going to see the rains moving today. 3.30, 4 o'clock, some rains around. Uh, and then we'll kind of see that sea breeze collision right there, 5 p.m., most of the showers and the thunder showers that we're going to be tracking are going to be across the I-95 corridor uh, from about the Orlando Metro off to the east. So if you have evening plans, outdoor plans, yeah, we are going to be talking about those rising rain chances. There's 5, 30, 6 o'clock, very heavy rains at our east coast beaches. Oh, man. Not what you want on a Friday night. I get it. Afterward, watch all of that activity kind of gradually fading. For my friends in Brevard County that have been saying, we can't buy rain, maybe today's that day. Here's 10 p.m., for example, and we're still indicating rains across our East Coast communities. So, hey, that's that's on that's on cue to get you a little bit of rainfall. What about your Saturday? I know we are all wanting to plan for our weekend, right? Let's just start things off. I'm going to start it at 8 a.m. just so that we're all together on that. All right, so there you go. 8 a.m., showers around, perhaps. Let's follow this through time. All right, 10, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, some showers around. Now, the I will say this. The earlier that the rains start tomorrow the earlier they will be done, which is a good thing. Of course, we've got Sir Paul McCartney at Camping World Stadium. Seven seconds. Hold on a second. I need to move this forward. I moved it too far forward. Stand by. When it's laggy like this, it's hard to, to make these adjustments. Stand by. Let me back this up. Hold on. Bear with me. Hold on a second. I got to get it moved over. You see the reins around. I mean, like that goes without saying. All right, so... Four, let's go to like 4 o'clock. You can see the rains focusing again out east. So that's good because, again, if we get the rains done early in the day and moved over to the east coast early in the day, things will be looking better and better for the evening. So that's 4 p.m. Let's continue 5, 6, 7 o'clock. Yeah. So at least based on the current Futurecast model data, we actually do look good for the Paul McCartney concert. And then just continuing on from there into late night, 9, 10 o'clock. Yeah, we're fine. After that, let's go into Sunday morning. Go all the way out. Bear with me one second. I know. Ba, 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 ba. Here's Sunday morning. Looking good. Da, 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 da. Through the afternoon, we've got a couple of little showers around Sunday afternoon. And then into later afternoon, we'll get those thunder showers trying to develop. Uh, and then, of course, kind of continuing from there. So uh, rain chances on the increase. I apologize. Using Futurecast can be laggy at times, so I apologize. But you get the idea. So Memorial Day weekend, it is upon us. It is the unofficial start to summer. And it's very much looking like a summer's weather pattern, right? Uh, it doesn't take a meteorologist to call that. 40, 50% coverage of showers and thunder showers. Yeah, the rain chances are rising, effective today, and then continuing to go up. Jenny says, I've decided to make an executive decision, made the other day, that we are not camping today, but tomorrow. Not pitching a tent in messy weather. I mean, you know, tomorrow the storm chances are still with us, though they do edge down just a little bit for your Sunday and your Monday. Yeah, looks cloudy here in Winter Park. Beverly says, it's a little cloudy. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Carol says, good morning. Rain is coming. Love weather changes. Nice get together for movies. That's not that's not wrong at all. Um, Kenneth says, I'm going. Thank you, Eric, for mentioning the concert. Well, here's the, here's the actual concert forecast. So uh, we're going with the stormy weather for your pregame festivities, right? Your, your fun early and be before. But... While the concert begins at 8 o'clock, I think that there's going to be storms around, but clearing, okay? So things are looking optimistic. And then by about 10, 11, 12, you know, as uh, end of the concert, after the concert, things are looking better and better and better. But yeah, nothing is going to mess up my three-day weekend, Ryan says. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just here to get your take on the GFS wild predictions. Oh, and Jessica, we will absolutely be diving into that for sure. Yeah, we're going to talk about the tropics and its chaos. Sun will be out on Sunday, and he's asking, yes, for part of the day, but those storms are going to want to pile up on the East Coast. So if you're heading to the beaches, I would just say head out early. Yeah. John says, maybe I'll go sit in the pool today. I can't get completely wet. 
dip your feet in, whatever you're allowed to do. Absolutely not a bad idea. Frankie, good morning to you. Love you. Uh, and then he follows that up with an immature comment. Boy, if it, it wouldn't be my big brother if it wasn't immature comments. Ryan, workers showed up. So have a great, safe day and be nice to each other. Absolutely. And be nice to the workers uh, for, for getting there and doing all that stuff. Gina, good morning to you. I have plans for Tampa next weekend. I know it's a week away. Do you think it'll be okay, that storm out there? Um, yeah, yeah, I, I do. We'll look at the models. But, I, you know, I for right now, indications are that um, it's not, It's there's nothing set in stone. So I wouldn't make any adjustments to plans based on any storm out in the tropics at all. Carol, good morning to you. Headed to your side of the state for the weekend. Hoping the rain isn't too bad. It's going to storm the further east you go. Yeah. Facebook user says, I have a planned trip to the lighthouse in Port Orange, one o'clock Saturday. Bad idea. I mean, I would say that shortly thereafter, if not right in that time frame, there are going to be thunderstorms around. So yeah, Brian says they're an hour late. So let's see. Well, hopefully they do good work now that they're there, right? All right. So that's the Paul McCartney concert. Let's talk about the tropics, right? Yeah. Good time. So we are now a mere five-ish days, four days and change. Five days, whatever. We are now five days from hurricane season. I'm going to start a new thing, by the way. During hurricane season, what we're going to do is we are going to do a quick summary of the tropics that I'm going to post in, in addition to Coffee Talk. I don't know if I'm going to do that or if I'm just going to take the tropical part of Coffee Talk. I'll have to figure that out. But I want to add another little thing, like a talking tropics or something like that. So we'll have to figure it out, see where we go. But at any rate, um, we're not doing that yet. We're not in hurricane season, so we're not going to do that yet. Five days until the start of hurricane season. So what is going on out there right now? In the Atlantic Basin, nothing. All right. But if you look there around Central America and the southern shoreline there of Mexico, in the Pacific Basin, there is a little something. And more than likely, it's going to develop. Okay. Um, it's currently moving to the west-northwest at about 5 to 10 miles an hour over the next Five days time, there is a 90% likelihood that this gets going. Hmm. What is going on there? Well, for one thing, the Pacific's hurricane season runs from May 15th on. So their hurricane season starts a little earlier than ours. Now, I'm mentioning all of this because, interestingly enough, while we don't track the Pacific hardly ever, there are cases where things from the Pacific cross over into the Atlantic Basin, which includes the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. And that is kind of what the expectation is here. So over the next couple of days, this could become something of a tropical storm, tropical system. Models are even hinting it could become a hurricane. Then it comes ashore into Mexico. Then that moisture lifts into the uh, Bay of Campeche there in the southern Gulf, and could become something. And that is what we're looking at in the tropics currently. So for right now, I need to figure out how to turn Siri off on my watch because this girl wants to get involved way too often in our conversations. So that's what we're looking at in the tropics. Nothing in the Atlantic brewing yet. But if we take a look at the models, you can kind of see, yeah, the first time we've used spaghetti models this year. Super fun, right? Uh, so there they are. This is Invest, I believe it's Invest 91 in the Pacific, I think. They all kind of bring it across Mexico and into the Bay of Campeche and the Gulf of Mexico. And then from there, maybe a problem for us. So yeah, hey, this is, this is right in your baby book. This is the first time uh, that we're showing spaghetti models in 2022. Yeah. Awesome. Bruce, I don't know what the problem is. I apologize, buddy. Let's see here. Something beside coffee brewing in the Gulf. Yeah, I know, right? Exactly. Marie says, thanks for the updates. Of course. All right, so let's look at the computer models and see what this blob of spaghetti looks to do over the next couple of days. So there you go. There's that. 
Here's a look at the raw GFS. We always show this during hurricane season. If you're new to Coffee Talk, uh, this is not something you're going to see on TV. It's just too technical and it takes too much time to explain. But this is, if we look at it full screen, look in the top left corner, GFS 0.25. So that's quarter degree resolution. GFS is the global forecast system, also known as the American model. Uh, initialized 06Z on the 27th of May. It's the most recent model run we have. MSLP normalized anomaly, mean sea level pressure normalized anomaly. So what you're looking for is areas of high pressure and areas of low pressure. Yellows and oranges, that's high pressure. Think of it as happy highs. Blues and purples and greens. Think of it like Eeyore, lonely lows. Happy high, sunny. Lonely low, stormy, okay? Uh, and then hour zero valid 60 Friday, that changes as we go through time. That's the timestamp of the data, okay? So when is it valid? So let's just go forward and uh, right off the bat, I can see bottom left corner, it's kind of off the screen a little bit. I'll make it do that. Okay, right there. You can see near the word Kissimmee, that's a 962 millibar low, so it's forecasting a hurricane. Uh, this is valid 18Z on Monday, so it's hour 84, 2 p.m. Monday, May 30th. All right, then the hurricane or tropical system comes ashore into Mexico and the GFS in its infinite wisdom, yuck, 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 says, okay, we're going to put that there, but we're going to fire up some sort of a storm system in the Bahamas around Florida. Interesting. We'll follow through time. And then we're going to fire up another something in the Caribbean. Interesting. Let's follow through time. And that's going to move over South Florida. That would indicate, by the way, 1,999. I mean, that would be, you know, that would be a tropical system for sure. I don't know that I believe it, but let's just follow the GFS. That's doing its thing. Hour 270. And then, oh, there's more tropical moisture around the Bahamas again. I, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I, I put out a tweet yesterday, and I, I said uh, that this update to the GFS was... I don't remember what I said exactly, but it was like, man, I'm really loving this update because it is it is terrible. It, this this version of the GFS, like last year, I think the GFS was doing super, super good. I think it was better than the European. This year, the GFS is kind of terrible, like actually kind of terrible. It has been trying to develop a tropical system to hit Florida like hours 200 on for a month. And have we gotten a tropical system moving into Florida? No, it just keeps pushing it out and pushing it out. So the GFS is LOLZ, okay? Let's come over and let's look from the GFS. Let's switch over and let's look at the European, okay? Uh, the European has been very consistent in not showing that, but now it's been starting to hint at it. And, and, and I believe the European far more because... It hasn't just been continuously doing something wrong. It has been pretty right. And now that it's trying to show something, my confidence would be maybe it has a better handle on things. Same idea, top left corner, ECMWF, European Center for Meteorological Weather Forecasting, 0.1 degree, initialized 6Z, 27th of May. So it's this current model run. Uh, mean sea level pressure, normalized anomaly, hour zero, blah, 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 blah. All right, same colors and everything. Let's just roll through time. It's doing the exact same thing. Uh, bottom left corner of your screen, this is hour 90. You can see it's trying to develop a hurricane in the Pacific Basin. Hour 90 is as far as the 6 and 18Z model runs go, so we have to switch over to the 12Z run to go any further out. So let's do that. Da, 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 da. Now it's trying to take that moisture from the Pacific and put it into the Bay of Campeche. That is far more believable. And then from there... Hour 222, hour 228, 234, 240. It's got a tropical feature in the Gulf of Mexico on Monday, June the 6th. Okay? Now, where does it go after that? We can switch over to the European ensembles to just kind of get an idea of where it's going after that. It, this is all just kind of using the, the products thereafter. It kind of doesn't know what to do with it, which is fine. Hour 360, it kind of has it just parked out there. Um, so there, there is definitely, I think, growing confidence that something in the Pacific Basin does try to form and that something in the Pacific Basin then tries to become 
a crossover storm system. It doesn't happen very often. Um, it, it, it does happen, but it just doesn't happen very often. As a matter of fact, the last time that we had a crossover, it was almost in that identical spot. That was Tropical Storm Amanda in 2020. Uh, kind of did its thing and moved into the Gulf of Mexico and became Tropical Storm Cristobal because what happened is it lost... If it keeps its surface circulation, then I, I I believe it keeps its name, but it lost its surface circulation, kept its mid and upper level atmosphere circulation, and then reformed a surface circulation. So back in 2020, Cristobal was a crossover system, okay? So it has happened. Ironically enough, it's in basically that identical spot. It just doesn't happen all that often, okay? It's been a couple of years. Now, that said... In our long-range forecasting and our West 2 2022 hurricane season forecast, we do have this as a part of the forecast, not a crossover, but this area and this timeline marked on the calendar. Um, if you're unfamiliar, the 2022 hurricane season forecast, and, and, and you know, this is something that, that we have put out for, for the last several years' time, what we do is we highlight areas and timelines in our forecast. It's different than most tropical timelines and forecasts, okay? So here's the forecast that we put out for the month of June. We issued this on March 1st. The 6th and the 7th, we'll be watching, I put Texas and Louisiana. That's where this weather pattern seems to focus on. But we did have that area highlighted on our long-range calendar. So that's been a part of our forecast for going now on three months, all right, so we'll watch to see how it plays out. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's just letting you know that the tropics are something we now need to start incorporating to our uh, forecasting picture. Yeah, over the next five days' time, a 90% chance that that develops in the Pacific and then comes ashore. All right? All right, let's see here. Carolyn says the GFS is wish casting. It's doing something just goofy. Uh, Michelle says, is the GFS malfunctioning? It has never been this crazy. I would say that it's probably just got to figure out vorticity and hurricane season and all that stuff. It's just got to figure it out. Bruce says, yep, last year the GFS was my favorite model. Yeah. Jenny Nelson says the GFS this year is for comic relief after hour 200. It's true. I mean, it's out to lunch. Models getting updates are, yeah, they're a thing. GFS guidance falls short. Until it's right, it's guidance, not gospel. If it were truly 100% accurate, you wouldn't be watching it. Well, thank you, Kenneth. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good way. Thomas, so Florida could see a tropical storm in June. Florida could see tropical systems all the time. I mean, we stick out like a sore thumb, for goodness sake. Stop it, Siri. I don't want to talk to you. Seriously, i got to figure out how to turn that thing off. All right. Um, Jonathan says, oh man, I have a beach getaway 610 over in Tampa. Don't change any plans. Don't be worried. Don't be changing any plans. I am sharing information with you just to let you know and to let you know what, like, I'm thinking. Um, I am, I am but one meteorologist. You could talk to two Mets and they'll all, um, <laughs> Taylor says, Kenneth, give directions to turn Siri off in the comments. Yeah, just on my... Honestly, on my watch and my phone, I don't use her at all. She's terrible. Um, but, I, you know, I want to give you the, the, the opportunity to know what I'm thinking. I'm not going to change any plans. I, when I make my summer plans, I do use my long-range forecasting um, a lot. But when it comes to watching the tropics, until you're like a week out or, f you know, four or five days out, you really, you, you, it's impossible um, it's impossible to know with with a particular degree of accuracy. You know, we use the the LRC, we use the BSR, but all we can do at the end of the day is to watch, right? Go home, GFS, you're drunk. I know, right? Uh, it's just, it's, you know, I just use this as a, as a casual reminder that hurricane season is here. Uh, regarding Siri to Eric, I told you earlier, check your notifications, please, and enjoy the piece. I, I'll have to, I guess. If you already said it, I'll have to check it out. All right, any questions about the tropics? Uh, we are in that time frame. Somebody was asking about the Saharan dust. It will start to dissipate. And if we take a look at the 
I, you know, this is kind of a model that I, I found. It's the GFS. You know, the GFS is not all bad. It's just not doing well with surface vorticity. But if we look at the upper level divergent winds, you see how there's a lot of like browns over the United States, which is on the right-hand side of the screen there right now. Watch how going into late May and early June, we start to see more and more and more greens in our area. What that is, is that's essentially the Madden-Julian oscillation going in phase and giving us that added little bit of extra spin. That's another reason why, as that happens, we have to start watching the tropics even closer because with that added spin in the atmosphere, that added support in the atmosphere, uh, the idea is as this goes into phase for us, that's usually when you watch the tropics. So like you notice during hurricane seasons, there's like periods of tropical activity and periods of tropical nil. That's the MJO going in and out of phase. And so we're about to go in phase in early June, and that lines up perfectly with that development. And we'll stay in phase. It looks like that's June 7th. That's June 8th. It looks like we're going to be going out of phase a little bit. Yeah, that's the end of it there. June 12th, we'll, we'll still be in phase, but uh, it will be weakening a little bit. So that's, that's a fascinating thing. That's a fact. The, the, the MJO is something, if you, if you are a weather nerd, let that be the next thing you dive into um, in nerddom. Yes. Thank you, Eric. Have a great day. See you all this afternoon. Very good. Nancy, see ya. Uh, Siri is good with texting someone or calling someone. Google Assistant is better for most things. I like, um, I like my Alexa. If I could get her on my phone and my watch on my Apple products, life would be good. Carol says, fake news is playing outside at the airport. Is that a movie? I would say that Deland Saturday night, though, um, there's going to be showers and thunder showers around. We fly in a week today. Sarah, showers and storms are out for sure, yeah. As a matter of fact, let's just take a look at the seven-day forecast here because those rain chances are on their way up. Hold on one second. Let me hit this button and this button and this button. Okay. Uh, yeah, the rainy season is in full force, my friends. Those rain chances on their way up. 50 or so percent coverage of rain these next couple of days. Oh, it's a band. Okay, very cool. Very cool. Yeah, we'll be watching the storms. Is it at the restaurant at the airport? One of the few places I've ever gone ordered a burger rare, and it came out rare. What's the name of that restaurant, Dad? Airport Bar and Grill. Airport Bar and Grill. Hey, why, why make it any other name? That's exactly what it is. It's delicious. Also known as the gin mill. Also known as the what? The gin mill. Is that like an old name? Gotcha. Mercedes says, I love the rainy season. Yeah, yeah. We'll come prep for all seasons. Ponchos at the ready. There you go, Sarah. You know what's up. You know what's up. Totally ready for the rainy season. It's here. It's here as we enter into the unofficial start of summer. All right? All right. So the tropics over the next couple of days, my friends, over the next couple of days, the tropics are something we're going to have to start to watch. I'm not overly concerned about any of that. Um, we're going to watch. It's going to be information, um, and, and it'll be certainly something to talk about. But remember, never get freaked out. That's why I'm here with you every single morning for a half an hour or more to talk about weather. And then to take it a step further, in the afternoons, we chat for like 10 minutes, five days a week. And when there are actual threats from the tropics, I do updates, like, constantly, right? It's so that you're not freaking out. I know there's a meteorologist in Tampa. His his shtick, which is great, is remember rule number seven. And it's essentially, it's like, don't freak out unless I freak out, and I'm not going to freak out. And it's like, yeah, that, that, that works. That works. Don't freak out. I'm not going to ever freak out. Plan and prep knowing that hurricane season is coming, just buy a couple of extra supplies each and every time. Was that your dad talking nice to you? It was dad talking, yeah. It was my dad talking. Um, so just be prepped. Just have your stuff, yeah. Thomas, will you be on more than half an hour next week? Listen, I, I, 
we'll do what we'll do. I don't know. I'll do my half an hour in the morning, and if I need to do more, I'll do more. Kelly says, true, I've never seen you freak out. Look, even when we had Dorian, like, staring at us, it's like, okay, you're never going to make a good decision when you're in freak out mode. That's the first thing when I was learning to fly airplanes. They're like, just remember, never, ever freak out. You're always just working down a checklist, right? And that's the way that we should approach hurricanes. And at this point, even though the models are saying something, they are guidance, not gospel. So I don't believe it until I see it. All right. All right. I will see you guys and gals today at 3.30 in the afternoon for the afternoon coffee talk. We'll be looking at the 12Z model runs as they're coming in and starting to look at the weekend forecast with a little more depth. All right. All right. Be the sunshine. It's someone else's day. Thank you so much for hanging out for Coffee Talk. See you in a little bit. Tell your dad good morning from all of us here on Coffee Talk. Debbie and everybody from Coffee Talk says good morning, Dad. Good morning. He says good morning. All right. All right.